Welcome to this new series on neural networks for architects. First question is, why another tutorial on neural networks? If you look out there, there's a lot of it. People explain, they show, they teach how to solve problems with uh, neural networks and uh, or how neural networks work. And uh, of course, you as an architect, this is an engineering question. And of course, you as an architect, you have to know how to make a, and you have the experience how to make a wall from bricks to get an understanding of what's going on with all the craftsmanship, with all the arts uh, on your architectural uh, construction site. But as an architect, you have to forget all these things. You have to know them, but you have to, let's say, forget it. Because you want to ask the very architectural question, what is it good for? And how to bring it into certain uh, constellation to make your architecture. And if you look, there's very few about these kind of reflections on neural networks or more general artificial intelligence. So we want to focus on this question. So uh, this is uh, the video is a short uh, appetizer towards a more uh, detailed uh, text available. Um, <clears throat> the challenge of AI is, and I strongly believe in this, is that uh, BIM or parametrism are just uh, the weather lightning at the horizon for what's coming up with computing driven by, with AI. And uh, the, the challenging thing, and this interestingly enough is especially challenging and questioning the engineering itself, not the architecture, is that one and the same algorithm is able to solve any problem. So, and AI is able to solve any problem or they do whatever people like. And they're doing it because they do not care. And they're doing it always with the same algorithm. Now we call this uh, neural networks. Unfortunately, it, it's um, uh, using the image of the of your brain and so on, which I think is completely nonsense uh, kind of propaganda. This would be paradise if things work like uh, people want and they like it. But what we see today, it's a kind of Babylonian confusion. So everybody likes different things. And there's no consensus about that. And by that, the architectural question comes, what to do to get consensus and quality and consistency and the kind of constitution for a certain location on our planet. So like all problems being solved, all people getting happy in principle, the question for architects is, what is architecture if computers can do what we think architecture is? And we want to, want to go deeper into uh, these uh, questions. And there are two uh, principal branches of the technology involved. The first is uh, big data. There's a plenty of data. So in principle, you have access to all the data on this planet. So we are suffering with that. We have, uh, for example, 10,000, 100,000, a million pictures a day about architecture we should look at. But there's not enough time for that. And the interesting observation is that your eyes are getting blind with the plenty. But with your voice, you easily can say, as I'm doing, doing now, you can say, this is one picture. I can, with the same sentence, you can say a hundred picture, a million picture, a billion picture. And it can be every hour, every day, who cares? You can talk about it. You have no problem with your voice, with your actuators, uh, with the plenty. Now you might say, what 
make sense. What is this, what is what is the meaning of that? If I talk about pictures I haven't seen, AI will help you. I promise. It's interesting to get out of the threat of the plenty or the excess of the machines. Architecture can be the answer in line of the tradition of our profession. That's very interesting as well. So there's more I developed uh, if you're interested in. The second technology, uh, the second branch of, of this uh, technology is artificial intelligence. And this simply says if there's enough data, you can solve any problem, as we said. And that's very so if you have all the data of the problem of, of, of the of, of the planet or some random things of the planet to get a rough overview of what's going on in the planet, we will do these kind of things. Then AI is not a tool we have to, to run. So the challenges are these kind of change in your thinking. It's not a tool because there's no problem. And uh, it's not about understanding because things are understood. They don't care, these machines, but they understand. And it's not about empathy because computers like everybody. This is what we experience. People feel understood by these algorithms better than uh, humans can do. We can only understand very few, not the population. So, and you can go here, categories, functions, no simulation, no optimization, uh, yeah, no sensibility, no trust sensibility, because sensors are much more sensible than our senses, and for that, NZ sensation is fake. So, go with this turn in, uh, in your mind setup. So, it's not about gender, for example, to meet the, the, these uh, discussions uh, these, these years. It's about engendering. And it's not about creation or being creative. It's about engendering things. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. What I think, and I want to follow this idea and, and make it interesting for you. There's these abstract technical terms on big data and artificial intelligence in this, this case. So, in architectural terms, I would say big data is cultural heritage. So, it's something like the experience of yesterday. All the experience of our cultures we had. And it's accessible, but it was yesterday. So, therefore, it's dead. And in architecture, we say this is orthographia, if we follow uh, Vitruvius and Alberti with these principal tractatus defining what we think about architecture today and, and our whole uh, cultural uh, line about architecture. So I would say big data is cultural heritage. It's a technical view to our cultural uh, heritage. It's the same with uh, now with uh, these uh, artificial intelligence. This is I would say the performativity of the infrastructures of urbanization today. And this is global, and it's good like that. It's good to have hospitals, uh, schools, it's good to have uh, mobile phones uh, getting information everywhere, uh, good to emancipate people with education, uh, good to have food, fresh water. Uh, sewage water, uh, good air, and so on. And all this is good, and it turns, these infrastructures turns towards environmental issues, towards health issues, and so on. And this about recycling, all these are the uh, structural, systematic access to the uh, globality to make it healthy for eight, 10 billion people. And this organization, I would say, AI shows up in forms of uh, urbanization. So what we see today in urbanization is 
that the structures are working like that, we do not really emancipate from that. So the architecture is somehow missing. So therefore architecture or the buildings or the forms of urbanization are very uh, generic, as the infrastructures are. They are always somehow the same. And even then with these big architectural firms, they build wherever it is, like Hadid, Kohlhaas or whatever you, whoever you take. So it's a global generic uh, setup that's interesting. So therefore I would say working with, uh, <coughs> with Vitruvius and Alberti again, big data is with our cultural heritage, this is with orthography, and this is the vertical of uh, our buildings or our cities. The horizontal is ethnography, <coughs> which is uh, the vivid, uh, fertile uh, ground of, of things. Cultural heritage is dead, like the walls in our architectural uh, setup. The uh, urbanization, the infrastructures, the floor is uh, fatal. Things happen, things never expected and so on. There's all this kind of Babylonian confusion and so on. So to bring that into proportion, this is a noble task of architecture, which is uh, scenography and the proportion of urbanization and heritage towards the order or the logic of uh, our cosmic uh, cosmos for all people, all uh, cultures, the world. So, therefore, this I think is what we want to get and we want to get an understanding and access to the techniques involved so that you can trust this storyline of redefining architecture in a kind of new digital renaissance. So, so we want to go what, what is architecture. We always will reflect on that. We will have uh, enough example and experience in the how these things are done. You have to read these uh, tutorials and follow these tutorials step by step because it's, it's a clear line to get an understanding of what is going on. We are using uh, symbolic computation in, in the implementation of Mathematica because uh, this is a kind of lab of computing. So it's a laboratory, you can uh, train your thinking and making experiments very fast. In contrast to the how things are done, and if you for example take this prominent Python, it's always and only the question of how to do things. So Python is a production line, it's a factory for doing neural networks. Mathematica or this uh, symbolic computation is more a lab to get an understanding and experiments around what. Therefore we want to use Mathematica. I think it's not it's worth to uh, uh, to use this this kind of uh, computation in this code or language, even if you want to have a production line with Python uh, later. Because with Python you are in this in this problem solving paradigm, and you can't get out of it. It's too much pragmatics in there, and you can't make real experiments because without being a super engineer. So you really have to follow these strict lines. So we don't, we will not do that. So <coughs> challenge, careful. So the one thing you have to uh, uh, keep in mind is the big problem of, of AI and its application is big data, to get big data and to process and to organize and to manage this huge amount of data. For example, if you want to, um, for example, to characterize pictures, for example, to, to get the, uh, the, if you have a face and a picture of a face and you want to uh, say how old this person is or with which gender or with, yeah, then uh, 
you need 500,000 pictures. And you have to assign ages to all these 500,000 persons. And if you miss, for example, uh, a certain ethnic, you're out. Then you have to make another 100,000. So that's a real problem. So we will not focus, we'll have a little on these technologies, but we will not focus on, on and use real data because of that reason. So we will synthesize our data so we don't have problems with big data. Our key interest is to understand the proportion of cultural heritage and uh, infrastructural urbanization and put that into a proportion. So don't so and, and be aware that this is a mess. So all these uh, uh, big data sets you can get are uh, highly uh, uh, curated. And if you want to, for example, uh, get, uh, you, you can have uh, a huge sets for uh, object detection and, and, and images. If you want to apply that and make that, redo that uh, for architecture, for example, to find interior, exterior elements of architectural elements and simply identify them on the pictures. I don't know whether there is, I don't know a data set of this, but there are data sets of, for example, with car driving in the city in an urban environment and you can identify certain uh, things of importance for car driving. If you want to do that, you need millions of pictures and identify all the objects, give them names and so on. And if you don't have a million, it's not working. So you can do it with very few pictures, but then the range and the, the competence of this neural network will be very narrow. So you have to keep that in mind. And you will not, uh, uh, we don't want to be, get bothered by this problem. So I think that's it. Yeah, I hope you find that interesting this setup and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.